Not only was she good at making alcohol and transporting it, but she was so good at getting out of punishment for breaking the law. I'm Kylie Kinley. I am the author of uh, Nebraska's Bootlegger Queen, which is about the life of Louise Bensequera, who lived in Omaha but had a bootlegging enterprise all over the state of Nebraska during Prohibition. She was married very young and she had the two sons when she was still a teenager. And so I think that they all kind of grew up together, which is, I think is is often what happens with someone who becomes a mom so young. And she was navigating becoming an adult as well as becoming his mom, and then also figuring out uh, what she wanted to, to do for a career. It's obvious in all of the all of the information about her that she wanted something bigger than a lot of the roles that were she was supposed to take and not challenge at all. And so she ran her own bootlegging business and she didn't just do it successfully in Omaha, she had it in Council Bluffs and then when her and Earl got together they moved it across the state of Nebraska. So she wasn't just making hooch for her neighbors on the block, she was doing it on a mass scale. The newspapers loved her. They're the ones that coined the, the term Queen Louise, which a lot of other women across the country were called the queen, bootlegger queen. But I think for Louise, it, it stuck a lot because of just the way that she carried herself, where she very much did not act like a shifty criminal. She was a, yes, I sell alcohol, and what are you gonna do about it? And I'm good at it. And she even said that to the two reporters. She brought them to her house and boasted that she made more money than the Nebraska's governor did at that time, just on her, on her alcohol business. And that kind of fortitude and just complete disregard for what consequences are gonna come from that, because not only did she get hauled into court for alcohol, violations, but also taxes. They're like, you didn't pay this much in income taxes. What are you talking about? Not only was she good at making alcohol and transporting it, she was so good at getting out of punishment for breaking the law. So she paid into a syndicate. Omaha was owned by a crime boss named Tom Dennison, and he was the one that was in charge of who got in trouble, who did not, and, they, and he ran it like a business. Because she paid them dues, they did not come raid her stills. And so when she quit paying those dues because she got tired of the, uh, the, the system, then that's when her, her stills got raided regularly. Sometimes she would get off on a technicality because she was very good, she had very good lawyers as well. Or, for example, one time, one of the judges, he in a different case, he had let the jurors sample the illicit alcohol to see if it was really alcohol. Because people know what alcohol tastes like. And then they said that you can't make them judges of the evidence of whether or not it's good or not, so they had to throw that case out. So then she got her case thrown out too. And so she was lucky sometimes, but she's also very skilled at playing the game. Here's the thing, sometimes she has gotten out of so many fines that I, even though I spent two years with this, have not quite, it, she's, even in memory, she's just elusive, she's ghost-like, because she got out of it so many times, and she was convicted so few times. It's, it, she, I can understand why they were confused by her, because even with hindsight being 2020, it is confusing to look at how many times she actually served time or was fined for her crimes. Post-prohibition, she left Omaha. She was like, bye Omaha, you've only been terrible to me, I've been peacing out. So she chose Hastings, Nebraska. She helped operate a roadhouse that refused to get a liquor uh, license, which caused lots of, I mean, she, and there was no syndicate. She broke a law, she was immediately nailed for it. And she was just like, She'd forgotten what it feels like to not be protected by a mob boss. I really think that she moved to Hastings because she wanted to distance herself from her criminal past. She tried really hard to not be a criminal and to um, finish raising her sons. I mean, they were both in college and it didn't work out. So she moved back to Omaha, she married again. But when she moved back to Omaha, it was a changed Omaha. Uh, Prohibition was over, I mean, it was the depression. And so she was, ill-equipped to work in that new Omaha. And uh, she ended up divorcing her third husband. She moved to Arizona. She ran another uh, roadhouse tavern. And the cir circumstances surrounding her death don't make a lot of sense to me. I'm not sure what happened exactly, but this man came into the cafe and said that he needed to talk to her. Her employee said she was asleep upstairs. They, he's like, no, I have to talk to her. And so they went and got her. And she's like, oh, this is about buying a car. She loved cars, by the way. That was one of her things is, very nice cars that were very fast. And so she left in, at night and 
it doesn't make any sense to me. And he took her out into the desert and shot her and robbed her and took her car and left. And they didn't find her, her body for months later. And a road crew found her body and it was uh, in a flaming red octillo bush. And so that was Louise's end, was she was murdered in the desert alone.